All right, so we've now covered two different types of stoichiometry problems, mole to mole and mole to mass. And the similarities thus far have been that we always have to do some type of mole ratio to convert from one substance to a new substance. Well, this problem here is going to be no different. We're going to go one step further now, and we're going to make a three-step problem to go from mass to mass, meaning that we're given a certain amount of reactant, we're told it's going to react, and we're asked to predict how much is going to form. This is very, very similar to what's going to happen in the lab that we'll do later this week and in most labs that involve stoichiometry. So here's an example problem like that. And again, we're going to call on that same uh, formula and problem that we've been using straightforward since the beginning. So how many grams of carbon dioxide are formed when 42 grams of pro propane completely combust in oxygen? So again, your starting point is going to be 42 grams of propane, and our ending point is going to be grams of carbon dioxide. So three steps in this process. Step one is to get from grams of propane into moles of propane. Step two, moles of propane to moles of carbon dioxide. Step three, moles of carbon dioxide to grams of carbon dioxide. So we're going to be systematic in our approach, and we're going to continue to use the train track method that we've been using throughout. Again, you're going to start with the amount of your given product, 42 grams and for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to write P for propane. Well, how about PR? Okay, to go from grams to moles, we need to divide by molar mass. Well, when we're using the train track method, the way we divide by molar mass is by putting that on the bottom. So, one mole of propane, C3H8, goes on top. And we have to figure out how many grams of propane that is. Well, 3 times 12 carbons is 36, plus 8 is 44 grams of propane for every 1 mole of propane. Now, again, that's just the molar mass, grams per mole. And the reason grams went on the bottom is because we want it to cancel here and here. Well, now that we're in mole, our common language, we can convert from moles of one substance into moles of another. So to get rid of moles of propane, we put it on the bottom mole of C3H8 down here, and I'm going to put in a new color for us, mole of our substance that we're looking for, carbon dioxide, on the top. Now the numbers again come from the balanced chemical equation. Three goes with carbon dioxide, one goes with propane. Moles of propane cancels, and if we were to stop right now and do our calculation in our algebra, what we come up with is a unit of moles of carbon dioxide. However, we are looking for grams of carbon dioxide, so we need to continue the problem. So as we continue the problem, we try and eliminate moles of carbon dioxide. And the only way to eliminate moles of carbon dioxide is to put that in the bottom. We're going to put grams of carbon dioxide on the top, CO2. There are 44 grams of carbon dioxide in every one mole of carbon dioxide. Now we cancel out our units, and we come to 42 divided by 44 times 3 times 44, which gives us a grand total of 126 grams of carbon dioxide formed in this reaction. This right here is a three-step mass-to-mass conversion using stoichiometry.